Hi students, uh, today we are going to discuss the IGCSE forecast examination 1 2022 subject chemistry paper 2. Okay, it is multiple choice extended one. Okay, so we will discuss in details about the questions and answers, of course. Okay, so let's get started. Question number one. Uh, can it be sent to you, all of you? Let me make it a little smaller size. Uh, it's we can be okay. It's fine. <laughs> the small crystals of purple potassium manganate, which relative mass is one fifty eight and orange potassium dichromate, which relative mass, the weight of this compound is 294, were placed at the center of the separate petri dishes filled with the aguazeli. They were left to stand under the same physical conditions. Uh, look at after some time, the color of each substance has spread out as shown in this diagram. Okay, this is dish one and this is dish two. And already you know the dish one here we have potassium manganate, which mass, which weight is about 158. Whereas the dish to contain uh, potassium chromate, so here the relative mass of potassium dichromate is 294. Okay, so obviously here you could see in terms of uh, the mass, if at all you compare both of them, then you will find it dish two containing, I mean the potassium dichromate is having higher mass, okay? The weight of this dish two is going to be more as compared to dish one. So they're talking about, you know, diffusion. So diffusion is phenomena where, uh, you know, it, it, the particles will start to move. I mean, randomly here and there, right? So light, lighter one will move faster. So diffusion will be taking place much faster in lighter particles. The heavier particles, diffusion will be slower. So look at the questions first. The length of the error indicate the relative distance traveled by the particles of each substance which statement is correct. The options there are, uh, you know, first option says, Diffusion is faster in dish one because the mass of particles is greater. Second option says diffusion is faster in dish two. So already I said you that uh, diffusion will be faster in lighter particles, lighter means which has less mass. So obviously here in the diagram, you could see dish one has less mass, which contain only 158 uh, MR of potassium manganate, whereas dish two is having higher mass, I mean heavy, it is heavier one. Heavier will have less diffusion, lighter particles will have more diffusion. It's very clear. So just to find out which option is suitable as for the, uh, this concept. So you could see option one is not going to the correct because diffusion will be faster where? Diffusion will be faster at uh, dish one, but the region is actually wrong. They have mentioned mass of particles is greater than mass of mass of particles actually uh, smaller. Okay, here, so that is option A is not appropriate. Option B also not correct one. If you need faster it is it's wrong, completely wrong. C also is not right. Diffusion is slower in this two because the mass of particles is greater. So this is going to be the right answer, okay? The right answer is diffusion will be slower in this two. It is this two, right? Which has more mass, 294, right? So heavier particles. So particles greater, diffusion is slower. So you can write, answer will be D, last option. Impurity change the melting point and boiling point of substance. Sodium chloride is a salt is added to the sample of pure water. How does the addition of sodium chloride affect the melting point and boiling point of water? You know that purity can be checked 
by means of melting point and boiling point, especially for the water, right? Is it pure water or impure water? So how does the addition of sodium chloride, I mean, here the sodium chloride will act as impurities. So when you add sodium chloride into the water, what could be the uh, changes of melting point and boiling points? Obviously, in the pure water, if you add anything in terms of impurities here, we have added the sodium chloride. The boiling point will be for, okay, boiling point will, what would happen to the boiling point? So anyone can answer these questions. What would happen to the melting point and what would happen to the boiling point? So obviously boiling point will increase because we know water boiling point gonna be 100. Okay, 100 degrees Celsius, the water supposed to be boiled. But here we have added little salt and SEL, right? So that it might boil above 100 degrees. It can be 110 or 115. So that we can write increases. Okay, so boiling point increases, increases is only two places. Here increases and here increases. The decreases are actually Unappropriate, it's not suitable. So answer can be A or answer can be A or C, this or this. Okay, look at it, the melting point. So in case of melting point, if you add the sodium, the melting point will decrease, remember it. Okay, melting point will decrease so that option C will be the right answer, okay. Here melting point is increased there in the option A, so it will be not the right answer. So answer will be option C. Melting point will decrease if you add sodium chloride to the water and the boiling point will increase above 100. Okay, let's uh, do the next one. Next question is question number three. Uh, yes, <clears throat> it is usual questions. It's, uh, you know, from the chapter two, I guess, right? Chromatography topics, yes. The diagram shows the chromatograms of four substances. Which substances has an R value of approximately 0 0.32? So do you know what is R value? So RF retention factor. RF value is basically called retention factor. The substance travel uh, and divided by the solvent. Okay, travel by the substance divided by the distance traveled by the solvent front. So distance traveled by travel by solute. So just I write shortcut. Remember distance D for distance, T for travel, solute divided by distance traveled by solvent front. That's F or solvent water also can write. Okay, so just I write here, solvent front is this, <clears throat> and these are four different solutes. Okay, this is one, this one, second one, third one, and fourth one. These are different solute where uh, you can see <clears throat> how much distance they travel from the baseline. From the baseline, how much distance they travel. So find out distance, uh, the RF value for the first solid, let's suppose here. Per, per centimeter. Okay, this much distance you travel it. This is uh, distance traveled by this solute. Okay. So distance traveled by the substance is four centimeter divided by distance traveled by the solvent front. Solvent front is 19. 19. You divide it and get which arrow value must be uh, approximately 0 0.32. So find out four divided by four divided by 90. So if you divide this number, so you will be getting 0 0.21, 0 0.21. So it's not equal to 0 0.32, right? So at least you get nearby this value. So, okay, let's do, I did for this. So let us do for uh, the fourth substances, okay. So distance traveled by the substance is 14 and divided by solvent front is 19 centimeter. So let's divide it. Uh, 14 by 19, right? 
So if you divide 14 by 19, again, you will get it 0 0.73. This is also not equal to 0 0.32. Okay, let me do for uh, A. Okay, for this A. Substance A. Substance A is 6 centimeter. So 6 divided, R value is equal to 6 divided by 19, the front. <clears throat> so what do you get it? 6 by 19. So 6 by 19, you will get about 0 0.31. 31, 5, 7, 8, and so on. So that will be equal to that will be equal to approximately 0 0.32. Okay, so that substance, which substance? Substance A is actually having a same error value with this one. So where error value for the substance A is going to be same like 0 0.32. Okay, so what will be the right answers? Answer will be option A. Option A going to be the appropriate answer. Is it clear? It's very simple it's chromatography questions. Four, which element does not form stable ion with the same electronic structure as argon? So which can form like nearby, I mean, argon electronics configuration. So look at argon is AR, atomic number is 18. So which are nearby argon that's gonna form it and which very far from that. So they like to become other uh, noble gases. So basically, which element can uh, be happy with argon? I mean, which element can be stable after giving electrons or after uh, receiving electrons with the same argon configurations? So first option, you look at aluminum. Aluminum atomic number, you know, total number of aluminum is 13. So if 13 take part in the chemical reaction, aluminum can lose three electrons, right? So three electrons means electron number will become 10. So 10, it will be equal to with the neon, not with argon, okay? So aluminum <coughs> having stable uh, configuration with neon noble gases, not argon. So answer going to be actually A. Okay, which element does not form stable ion with the same electronic structure with argon? So aluminum is the right answer. Why not chlorine, phosphorus, potassium? This chlorine atomic number, you know, 17. So after losing electrons, so it can actually be stable as like argon also. Okay, so this is actually 2, 8, 7. So if chlorine take part in the chemical reaction, chlorine can gain one electron, so it can become like argon only. So chloride minus one is supposed to be same as argon to 8, 8. Phosphorus also, phosphorus ion also can become like argon. Which phosphorus? Phosphorus uh, three minus eight. Phosphorus three minus also can become stable structure with argon. Press potassium, potassium is K plus K plus also can form a stable structure with argon, but aluminum cannot. Aluminum can have the stable structure with neon. So answer will be A, very simple. Five, graphite and diamonds are both form of element of carbon, which shows the number of other carbon atoms that uh, each carbon atom is covalently bonded to the graphite and diamonds. It's very easy to answer, right? So graphite, how it looks, graphite looks like, this is carbon. So both of them are actually uh, made by carbon. So graphite, one carbon is attached with, how many carbon? This is the central carbon attached with, one, two, three, three carbon. So graph, this is the structure of graphite, trigonal, right? So option C and D will be never. So from this graphite structure, you can know, you can understand that one carbon is attached with three carbon only. Okay. Okay. So that option can be A or B. So now look at the structure for diamond. Diamond is a tet tetrahedral. So one carbon is attached with four, uh, three carbon, four carbon, yes. 
So this is the structure for diamond. Okay. And the previous one, this is actually graphite. Okay, so graphite one carbon is attached with three carbon, whereas diamond in case of diamond, four one carbon is attached with four carbon. So option A is also wrong. So option B will be the right. So graphite is three carbon covalently bonded with this. Uh, how many? One carbon is uh, one carbon atom is covalently bonded with three carbon atoms in case of graphite, but in case of uh, diamond, there will be four. Okay, answer is B. Clear? The next one, quickly answer. Uh, six, which statement describe metallic bonding? Uh, metallic bonding, you know, these are positron, positive charge and, okay, so these are positive charge and, and here there will be negative. These are for C electrons, delocalized electrons, C of electron. And this is for positive charge and okay. This is the metallic bonding. So look at um, what they are metallic bonding basically, the attraction between uh, lattice positive charge and delocalized electrons. Okay, this is the attraction between positive, lattice positive charge and delocalized electron. This attraction is known as metallic bonding. Which option is correct, appropriate? Option A says attraction between lattice negative ion and delocalized proton. So delocalized electron we also know. Okay, option B, attraction between lattice of positive charge. Lattice means actually arrangement pattern. Okay, uh, regular arrangement of positive charge and and then delocalize electrons. Okay, electrons are actually surrounded by the positron, positive charge. Okay, so answer are going to be option B. Okay, this also not correct option C, D also not the right. Okay, answer will be B. Why? Because this is the attraction force between lattice of positive charge and, and delocalized electron is known as metallic bonding. Is it clear, all of you? Okay, now come to next questions. Which equations are balanced? So how to know is it balanced or unbalanced? Just count the number of atoms in the reactant side and product sides. If they're equals, then that's kind of balanced equations, right? So find out uh, if you talk about first one, iron oxide react with carbon monoxide, form iron and carbon dioxide. Look at it here, iron is two here. Here also iron two. Iron is balanced. Whereas, look at for carbon, three carbon here. Here also we have three carbon. Uh, okay, iron balance, carbon also balanced. But oxygen, look at here we have three oxygen. Here we have three. So, total three plus three, six. So, reactant side three of six oxygen. Product side, look at three, two times. Three, two times six oxygen. Right? So, that this is going to be the balanced equation. So, so option D and C is already wrong. Why? Because first option is itself the balanced chemical equation. So option C or D cannot be. So it can be option A or B, right? So now look at it. Uh, quickly, you have to answer. So look at it. Uh, no need to think about this three. So no need to think about it because already here the answer is wrong. So you just see statement four and two. Okay, so statement two, uh, find out is it balanced or not. Zinc is one reactant side here, product is zinc, zinc is balanced. Now look at the chlorine, two chlorine is here, whereas here also chlorine also balanced. One carbon, one carbon, carbon also balanced. Now look at oxygen, three oxygen, Product side, there are two and two. So there are four oxygen products. So that means one atom is unbalanced, means completely unbalanced. So this is not going to be the balanced equations. So answer can be uh, first and fourth. 
Okay, so fourth one, no need to think about it. Why? Because the remaining options are wrong. So definitely it's going to be the four, one and four. So four ones uh, let you get clarity. Is it real balance or not? You just even count it, no problem, it's fine. Well, uh, there are one calcium reactant site, products are also same one calcium. So one sulfur, one sulfur balanced. Reactant side, one carbon, products are also one carbon. Reactant side, how many oxygen? We are three plus four, seven. Right, so products are also here four plus one, five plus two, seven. So option also balanced. That means one and four is the balanced chemical equation. Option B is the right answer. Okay, this is question number eight. Okay, so calcium carbide react with water to form ethane. This is the formula of ethane and calcium hydroxide. The equation of the reaction is so. This is the chemical equation you can find which volume of ethane is produced when six gram of water react completely with calcium carbide. So this question is basically you no know, stoichiometric calculations you have st already studied in chapter four, right? Stoichiometric chemistry. It's very simple. So first let us see what is given in the questions and what we supposed to be found out the answers. Here, the given uh, information is about six gram of water and we supposed to find the volume of ethane. Okay, see to H2. Find, uh, <clears throat> well, First, let us find the number of moles of water because we have given this information and we do not know exactly uh, anything. Is anything given here about ethane? Nothing is there. So first, let us find the number of moles of water. Well, because mass is there so that we can find number of moles. So number of moles formula is mass given divided by MR because water is a molecule, so we can say MR. The mass given is six divided by MR of water, you know. In the examination, it will be given periodic tables, and especially for IGCSE students, okay. Uh, you can just look at the mass number and then find the MR. Okay, water mass is uh, one, so there are two atoms of water, so it will be two, and oxygen, one atom. Oxygen mass could be 16, so 2 plus 16 is equal to 18. So 18 going with the MR of water. So after dividing 1, uh, you know, 6 by 18 will be 1 by, 1 by 3, right? Very good, 1 by 3. So 1 by 3, you just divide properly. 1 by 3. So you will be getting about 0. Point Three, three, three. Maximum three significant figure is fine. Okay, this is the number of moles of water. First step, you done it. Now, this very interesting thing is, uh, as in fact you got it, the number of moles of water. So you can have a comparison. Okay, mole uh, in the equivalent uh, in terms of the mole numbers. Okay, so here you just have to have the mole comparison between the water and ethane. So here we have one mole of calcium carbonate, uh, carbide react with two moles of water and then form one mole of ethane and one mole of, what is that calcium hydroxide? That means Two moles of water is equivalent with one mole of ethane. Understand? So mole ratio is two and one. So here I will write clearly for you water H2. The mole ratio between water and ethane will be two and one. Right? This is the mole ratio. They are equivalent. When two moles of water is equivalent with one mole of ethane. Okay, this is the mole ratio. Now, as in fact, the exact number of moles of water we got it just now, 0 0.333. Then what could be the number of moles of ethane? So 
as we do not know, so just we have mentioned I like X. So now find X, how do you find the just crisscross? Right, so X times of two is equal to one into zero point three three three. So two X will be equal to zero point three three three. Now x will be equal to 0 0.333 divided by 2. Okay, so when you divide it, the figure 0 0.333 by 2, so you are going to get it, the x, you will, you will be getting here 0 0.166. Three significant figure is fine, right? Okay, this is the number of moles of what? Ethyl, we found it. Number of moles of C2H2 means ethyl. Okay. Now it is easy to find the volume. So you know the formula, famous formula to find the volume of gas. So V is equal to or number of moles is equal to volume divided by 24 decimeter cubed. Right. So here we are asked to find volume. So V will be equal to n times of 24 decimeter cubed. Right, so number of moles of ethane you got it just zero point. What is that? Zero point one six six. Right, into twenty four. When you multiply this figure, okay, with twenty four, you will get about exactly figure. You will get three point nine eight four something. So which will be equal to or decimeter cube. Okay, so you can take as a round figure, you take like four centimeter cube, a decimeter cube. So, okay, decimeter cube is the proper unit. So, volume of ethane will be four decimeter cube, whereas other are actually not even close. It is very large, eight and 36. So, answer will be option A. So option A will be the right answer. Okay. Four decimeter cubed. Okay. So now question number nine. Question number nine says which statement about electrolysis is correct? So you know that the electrons move the electron light from the cathode anode. So is it correct statement as for this electrolysis? What is electrolysis? Electrolysis basically the process where you know, the ionic compound will be decomposed in the molten state or in aqueous solutions, right? Breakdown, decomposition is breakdown. So answer this questions, question number nine. So this statement is not right. Electrons move from the electrolyte from the cathode to anode. So it's not going to the correct statement. Uh, B, electron move towards cathode in the external circuit. Yes, this seems to be the correct. So let's say this is the experimental setup for the electrolyte, electrolysis uh, process. Let's say it's a simple electrolyte cell. They're supposed to be the two electrode. Okay, the positive one is anode, negative. This is the negative battery, positive battery. Okay, so positive terminals are supposed to be a big one. So negative terminal is supposed to be smaller one. So that's connected to the electrode is called cathode. Okay, and this is supposed to be anode. So electron move towards the cathode in the external surface. So yes, obviously, the direction of electrons will be like this. Okay, so it will be moving towards the cathode. Again, this will uh, complete the electric circuit by means of electrolyte and solution if if at least you have taken it. Okay, the correct answers is option B. Okay, so option C are not correct. It says our negative ion move towards the anode in the external circuit, not at all, and D also not correct. Positive ion moves through the electrolyte towards the anode during electricity. This is also not correct. So answer it will be option. Which option? Option B. Very good. Now 10, the reactivity 
series of number of different metals on. Okay, so which is more reactive, Mag manganese, sorry, magnesium, then zinc, iron, copper. Okay, it's arranged more reactive to least reactive. So the least one is platinum. And here the diagram shows different metal strip dipped into the electrolyte. Okay, here one is metal strip design in the form of electrode, another metal strip, another electrode is here, electrolyte. Which pair of metal produces high, highest voltage? So look at here, if I tell you find the more, uh, the difference, metal reactivity difference that you know, produce more voltage. If you find less metal reactivity difference, then that will produce less. So here you look at it. If you take magnesium metal and platinum metals, you are going to get huge voltage. You will get, you can generate more current, more voltage. If you take zinc and silver, uh, we get less than the magnesium platinum. If you take iron copper, that will be lesser. So if at all the reactivity nature, the difference of reactivity element is further or large, then the production of or the generation of voltage will be highest or more. Okay, so that look at the metal strip here. Uh, we're supposed to take here, uh, we know magnesium, and this is supposed to be which and platinum will give more voltage. So look at the correct appropriate. Option D, silver, platinum, no, magnesium, zinc, no, magnesium, platinum, yes. Magnesium, platinum, option A is wrong. Okay, magnesium, platinum will give more voltage. Why? Because they are further. Okay, the metal reactivity series, you can see, you already clearly mentioned. <clears throat> the reactivity difference is more. Okay, if the reactivity difference is more, then the more electricity. Less difference, less electricity. Clear? So answer is magnesium and platinum, option B. Now come to 11. Which statement about fuel is correct? Heat energy can only be produced by burning fuels. Heat energy can be produced by many ways, not only by burning fuels. Okay, so it's not going to the appropriate statement. Hydrogen is used as a fuel through it's difficult to store. Yeah, of course. It seems to be correct. Let's see other statement also. Methane is a good fuel because it produces only water. So methane actually says for, uh, it produces water also. When you burn it in presence of oxygen, it produces water as well as carbon dioxide gas. So they mention only produce water. That means it's not going to be the correct statement. Uranium is burnt in air, produce energy. Uranium is a radioactive element, so we don't burn it in the air. Okay, so three options is wrong. So obviously option B will be the right answer. Okay, now we, sorry, sec, next question is 12. Which statement about the exothermic and endothermic reactions are correct? Three statement during an exothermic reaction heat is given out. Yes, in the exothermic, uh, reactions heat will be out given out okay that seems to be correct statement so that uh, second statement the temperature of endothermic reaction goes up because heat is taken heat is taken it but it, this statement is not seems to be correct okay see burning methane is air is exothermic reaction obviously this is exothermic reaction so option this one and three seems to be correct. So that where do you find one and three? Option C going to be the right choice. Okay. Any queries? No. Okay. 13. The equation of the reaction between hydrogen and chlorine is so. This is the chemical equation you can find over here. Okay. The reaction is exothermic. The bond energies are shown in the table. Can you see the bond energy for chlorine? This is for chlorine and this is for HCl, one energy, and this is hydrogen, one energy, okay? What is the energy change of the reaction? Energy change, is they're asking about delta H, enthalpy, okay? Basically, you can get energy change just by uh, subtracting of the bond energy of reactant minus bond energy of product, means bond energy of reactant is hydrogen bond energy and chlorine bond energy 
minus the bond energy of the product. So bond energy of the reactant minus bond energy of so what is the bond energy here? Hydrogen bond energy is mentioned here for 436 plus. Uh, what is that again in the reactant side? Chlorine is the chlorine bond energy is 240. Add it. So four plus two is six. Then it's going to be 76, right? This is the bond energy for reactant, hydrogen and chlorine all together. And this is the bond energy of hydrochloric acid also you have to find HCl. So HCl bond energy is this 430. So here two times of HCl because two is already there in front of HCl, right? Two times of 430. So we'll get about 860. So this is the bond energy of product. So bond energy of reactant is 676 minus 860. So what, after subtracting, you are going to get it negative 184. Okay, so which option is correct? Option uh, D, right? Negative 184 is the right answer. Right answer, okay. Now it cannot be positive because it's exothermal reaction and we are getting negative value. So that exact figure you got it. So just write and remaining are wrong. Okay, so 14th, a gas is produced when calcium carbonate is heated. Which type of change is this? So calcium carbonate is basically limestone, CaCO3. When it's heated, we'll get it calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. Clear? So basically this is endothermic reaction. Okay, this is a decomposition reaction. So decomposition reaction always. Decomposition reaction always endothermic. Endothermic. Endothermic means heat will be taken. Heat has to be absorbed. Okay, so what type of change is this? Is it exothermic? Not at all. Is it physical? No. Separation? No. It's going to be a chemical change. Okay. It is chemical change. Fifteen, a student was investigating the reaction between marble chips and the dilute hydrochloric acid. Same calcium carbonate and HCl. Okay, CaCO3 plus HCl hydrochloric acid is reacted. Now, which changes slow down the rate of reaction? Temperature, concentration, surface area. You know, these three are the factors of uh, factors depend on the rate of reactions. So, three of them, if you increase then the rate of reaction will definitely increase because they are directly dependent, okay? If you decrease three of them, then the rate of reaction I and mean, the speed of reaction also, you know, decrease. So look at what can, which changes slow down, means they're talking about how or what will make the reaction rate slower. Okay, so you can say all three of them, if you decrease, then the reaction will be slower. Okay, if you like to make faster, then you in, you're supposed to increase it. So which option you can find three of them decrease, decrease, decrease. So option B you can find. Hmm. But option B there is increases that the last surface area. So this is not going to be the right. Decrease, 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 option A actually, right? Option A is the right answer. This is also option C not. Correct. Option D also not correct. Okay. So always remember these three uh, factors directly depend on the rate of reaction. If three of them increase, then the rate of reaction is going to increase. If you decrease, then the, the reaction is going to be very slow. Okay. So temperature has to be decreased. Concentration has to be decreased. Surface area also need to be decreased. So option A is the right answer. Now 16, the reaction used to manufacture ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen is reversible. And the equilibrium can be established between ammonia, nitrogen, and hydrogen. Which statement describe equilibrium? It's very simple. Equilibrium means equal conditions. The reactant side, the product side, the reaction is supposed to be same. Reaction rate, right? So 
option a both forward reactions and backward reactions have the same rate it seems to be correct but let's read the other options as well the rate of backward reaction is greater than the rate of forward reaction so how do you get the statements is incorrect because equilibrium is equal condition both of side reactants and products are supposed to be equal rate rate so i think option a is correct but let's see the c what this talk about the rate of for a reaction is greater than this also not correct for a reaction like for reactions have both stopped it is also not correct statement so answer will be option a okay next 17 an example of redox reaction it's on here this is the example of redox redox means reduction also and oxidation reaction taking place simultaneously okay which statement about the reaction is correct well uh, in this type of questions you have to find out which is going to be oxidized, which is going to be reduced so that we will get the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. So basically here, what you find uh, the zinc, zinc lost two electrons. So that means there is loss of, loss of electrons. Loss of electron means oxidation, oxidation. So oxidation means it oxidized. Oxidation is oxidized. Okay. And whereas copper 2 plus is a metal ion, gain two electron to become neutral metal. That means here gain of electron. Gain of electron means reduction. Or it reduced also, you can say reduced. So always remember which is reduced, that's will act as an oxidizing agent, oxidizing agent. Which is oxidized, that will act as a reducing agent. Reducing agent, is it clear? So now you can find uh, easily which statement about reaction is correct. So first statement, they say zinc is oxidizing agent. So is it zinc is oxidizing agent? Here only we found zinc supposed to be reducing agent, right? Zinc, why? Because zinc is oxidized. So that, that's supposed to be reducing agent. So option A is not at all correct. Option A is not correct. Option B says zinc is oxidizing agent because it reduces. <laughs> no, it correctly written uh, zinc is oxidizing agent. This is also not correct statement. Zinc is supposed to be reducing agent. Now it can be option C or D. Zinc is reducing agent, it oxidizes copper. So the statement is correct in first one, first half, but it's supposed to be reduced, All right? Uh, reducing agent. Yeah, so how? It's uh, zinc is reducing agent and it oxidizes copper. So this statement is wrong. Isn't it? So zinc is reducing agent and it reduces copper actually. It reduces copper. Okay, so that current statement is supposed to be D. So answer is D. Okay. Now 18. Which type of oxide is aluminum oxide? So remember aluminum is a amphoteric oxide, aluminum, lead, these are the metals. These few metals are there. That's, you know, act like a amphoteric, both nature, they can react with acid also and base also. So aluminum oxide is not, uh, can be acidic also and basic also. So here we say that, uh, you know, amphoteric nature. Understand? So it cannot be neutral. So the type of oxide aluminum is basically amphoteric oxide. Amphoteric oxide will be the right answer, okay? And then with statement about weak acids such as ethanoic acids are correct. Okay, so first statement says, it react with carbonates. 
And again, it does not neutralize at the sodium hydro solution. So it turns red litmus paper blue. Statement two, the, how, we have to see for the statement for weak acids. Like, okay, which is correct. It does not neutralize uh, aqueous sodium hydroxide solution. This supposed to be not correct statement. Yes, it reacts with carbonate. It is okay as per the ethanoic acid and it turns red litmus paper blue. So it is acid, blue litmus paper supposed to turn into red. So this is not correct statement. And uh, the last statement, it only partially ionized in aqueous solution. It's going to be correct statement. Weak acid can, uh, you know, <clears throat> ionize. And uh, that is called partial ionize also. Okay, strong acid can fully ionized and uh, weak acid partially ionized. So statement one and four is correct. Where do you find option B? <laughs> Sorry, option B. Okay. 20 silver chloride is a white solid, which is insoluble in the water. The statement describes how the sample of pure silver chloride can be made. It's very simple. What is the answer? Here, just first uh, statement itself, you will get the answer. Add silver nitrate to aqueous sodium chloride and then filter it. You'll get the salt rate. Precipitation reaction, do you remember? So answer will be A. And the rest of the options are seems to be wrong. Of course, wrong. This is not the process how we get the salt. This is also not the process. Okay, this also not correct. 21, dilute sulfuric acid is added to this two separate aqua solution X and Y. The observations are shown. X is white precipitate and Y is bubble of colorless gases. So you look at the solution X, <coughs> white precipitate, where do you get it? And uh, solution Y is supposed to bubble up gases. Mm, okay, so obviously iron two is not, iron two is supposed to be green. So this option is wrong. Copper is blue, this option is wrong. Okay, it can, uh, yeah, bubbles of colorless gases. So here option B also wrong. Why? Because here we have calcium and chlorine. Chlorine minus support chloride ion supposed to be uh, different. So they are talking about colorless gas. Okay, Cl minus it is a you know ion. Okay, chloride ion. So that is why this option also wrong. So from here carbonate, you will get carbon dioxide gas. So there is chance of bubble of gases. And of course, this barium two plus means barium sulfate. You know, barium sulfate compound might be there. So that is why this color is supposed to be white. Okay, so that is why option A will be the right answer. This is supposed to be a barium sulfate, so white solution, precipitate, right? Carbonates, you will get carbon dioxide gas that will give the bubble of gas, colorless gases, right? But chlorine gas is green. So, but here they mention about chloride ions, not gas, okay? Answer is A, 22. Which element is less reactive than other members of the group of the periodic table? So look at this uh, element. Well, the answer is, which one? You can see um, cesium, cesium, Fluorine, rubidium, and astatin. So, four element. The rubidium is more reactive, this first group element. Fluorine is also more reactive, it is seventh A group element, right? Cesium, first group element reactive. So, less reactive supposed to be astatin. Okay, so astatin is a non metal, it is found seventh A group at the bottom, but right? Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and then astatin. So astatin is the least reactive halogen element. Okay, so cesium is more reactive. So no 
they asked about less reactive. Okay, and the fluorine, rubidium, this all are actually reactive elements. The answer is going to be astatine is less reactive. 23, the element oxygen sulfur are in the same group of the periodic table. Which statement about oxygen sulfur is not correct? Oxygen sulfur, you have to find the first statement. They are non-metals. First statements is first options. Second option, they have giant covalent structure. Yeah, of course, here oxygen cannot form giant covalent structure. Sulfur can make can make sulfur. Yes, or no. So they are non-metal. This is correct statement. You have to find non uh, non-correct statement, which is incorrect one. First option is correct statement. Both of them are non-metal. So answer is wrong. First option is wrong. Second option, they have giant covalent structure. Actually, oxygen and sulfur they, uh, do not make giant covalent structure. So that is going to be the not correct statement. So answer will be B, correct answers. Look at C and D. Well, uh, you know, they have six electrons in the outer shell. Of course, oxygen and uh, sulfur. Which is atomic number eight, sulfur is 16, 2, 6, which is 2, 8, 6. So they will be having six electrons in the outer shell. So this correct statement, they will react to form oxide, acidic oxide. Yes, both of them. It forms sulfur dioxide, it's acidic oxide. Right? So option A, C, D, correct statement, whereas uh, which statement is not correct? They don't form Zan covalent structure. So this is going to be the correct answers. Okay. 24. Why are weather balloons sometimes filled with helium rather than hydrogen? So look at well, helium is found in air. Because of that, they use not at all. Helium is less dense than hydrogen. This is not going to be the correct. Helium is more dense than hydrogen. This is also not correct. This is not the reason why we use. Uh, to fill the balloons with these gases. Basically, the main reason is helium is unreactive. Helium is unreactive gases. Other gases are basically like hydrogen. It's a flammable gas. Helium, whereas, is not flammable as well as, you know, unreactive, cannot react. Okay, it's a net gas. Answer is D. Now, 25th, which process is involved in extraction of zinc from zinc blending? Okay, you have to extract zinc metal from, from where? From ZNS, zinc blend. So you can say just zinc blend. A, correlate is added to lower melting point of zinc blend. B, molten zinc blend is electrolyzed. Zinc blend is heated with carbon. Zinc blend is roasted in air. So, we don't use cryolite because cryolite we use only in the extraction of aluminum. Molten zinc blend electrolyte is not at all. Zinc blend is heated with carbon, no. Zinc blend is roasted in air. So of course, this is going to be the right answer. It has to be roasted in the presence of air. 26, element E, form an alloy has basic oxide below hydrogen in the reactivity series. So it's not carbon. It's not sulfur, it's not zinc, it's going to be the copper. But because copper is uh, form an alloy, like which alloy it can form? If you add copper plus zinc, you'll got brass, right? Yeah, when you add copper and zinc metals, so this mixture of metals will get this called alloy. Okay, this alloy name is called brass. So copper can form alloy and it has basic oxide. Copper can form basic oxide, like copper oxide is a base, right? And uh, it's below hydrogen in the reactivity. So of course, it is just below the hydrogen. Okay, so that is why option E, sorry. What is E? E will be copper. So option B will be the right answer. Number 27, a list of metals is shown. Aluminium, copper, iron, magnesium, silver, zinc. Which metal displaces all other metals? 
for the aqueous solution of the solvent. So look at random reactivity, you know, so it's given here, it's not a proper one. So you have to remember the proper metal reactivity series. Okay, so if you look at it uh, here, Magnesium is supposed to be more reactive than aluminum, copper, iron, right? So it's supposed to be here. So this is not a prop appropriate reactivity series. You have to find out which metal displaces all other metals from the aqueous solution of their salt. So basically, more reactive displaces the less reactive. So magnesium can displace all of them because magnesium is more reactive than all other elements. Okay. So here you find which options there is magnesium. Option A is wrong, B wrong, D is wrong, option C is right. Because magnesium is more reactive than other elements. 28, strainless steel is alloy of iron, other metals. It's strong and does not rust, but it's cost much more than normal steel. What is not made from the stainless steel? Stainless steels cannot corrupt. It's, you know, no can prevent the oxidation process. Okay. You will not get the rust mainly. So what is not made from stainless steel? So basically, cutlery we use, cutlery we use by means of stainless steel pipes and chemical factories we use stainless and saucepans also we use. But railway lines, we don't uh, use the stainless steel, normal iron we use, right? So railway lines is made by metal, iron metal. So answer will be C. Okay, answer will be railway lines. Now 21, the diagram shows some uses of water in the home. For which uses it's important for water to have been treated. So look at the diagram, which seems to be a treated water, pure water, okay, treated water. So uh, third diagram, it's not seems to be the treatment of waters. Okay, here just is the, I'm getting the plant, yeah. And two diagram here, you could see the water is actually, the man is using the water to wash the car. So this water is treated water, not water, not at all, right? So diagram one, you look at it, seems to be boiling. So when you boil the water, the water is getting pure. This kind of a treatment. Okay, treating water seems to be this diagram one. So you just write option A, only the water has been treated. Okay, now, uh, now diagram two and three, that water has not been treated. 30, the carbon cycle include the process combustion, com photosynthesis and respiration. Switch from source, how each process changes the amount of carbon dioxide in atmosphere. So the token combustion is burning. Photosynthesis, we use uh, carbon dioxide respiration also, all right? And combustion, what amount of carbon dioxide will increase? Anything you burn, let's suppose you burn methane in presence of oxygen. It will produce, of course, water and carbon dioxide. That means amount of carbon dioxide supposed to be increased, right? Combustion process. So option A and B supposed to be wrong because they mentioned decreasing. So answer can be C or D, right? So combustion process, the amount of carbon dioxide will increase and photosynthesis process, amount of carbon dioxide will decrease because photosynthesis means we use water and carbon dioxide to produce glucose glucose and oxygen so that the amount of carbon dioxide will be decreased the use of carbon dioxide of course will decrease uh, that is not increasing the carbon dioxide towards the atmosphere so decrease and respiration again it will increase because uh, respiration process what the glucose, the food we eat, and it will be reacted with oxygen to form water and carbon dioxide again, right? And the rest, uh, we respire the carbon dioxide. That means carbon dioxide is increasing in the environment. So that combustion process, carbon dioxide can increase. Respiration process, carbon dioxide will increase, but 
in photosynthesis process, carbon dioxide amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will decrease because carbon dioxide is used up in the photosynthesis process. The answer is going to be option C. Okay, so is it correct? Okay, next is 31. Which statement about the condition used in the Hebel process is not correct? Hebel process, uh, do you remember? The manufacture of ammonia, the Hebel is actually co-founded this, I mean, manufactured ammonia by using hydrogen and nitrogen. So look at it. Which statement about the condition used Hebel process is not correct? A, high temperature used because the polar reaction is thermic. Look at in the Hebel process in the manufacture of ammonia, the conditions, how many conditions you learned about temperature, pressure, catalyst, right? How much temperature? <coughs> Do you remember temperature was low? Pressure was high. Low means it's not too low. So compromised temperature was taken, but it was low. It was about 450 degrees centigrade, right? Pressure was 200 atm. Okay, so high pressure was taken, temperature was low. So first option they say is about high temperature used because forward reaction is exothermic. Forward reaction is exothermic, more heat energy is there, why should uh, have used this high temperature? Have used low temperature. So condition for the making process of ammonia is supposed to use the condition low, low temperature. It's about 450 degrees centigrade, okay? Answer A. Okay, and rest of the options are wrong, obviously, because these are correct statement. We use iron catalyst in this manufacture of ammonia. Okay, unreacted hydrogen and uh, nitrogen will be recycled to produce more ammonia. This is the correct statement. High pressure is used, this correct statement. Incorrect statement is A. Okay. 32, which chemical reaction decreases pollution in the air? Okay, option A. Sulfur react with oxygen, it will produce sulfur dioxide. This is a pollutant, so that won't decrease. Nitrogen react with oxygen to form nitrogen. This is also a pollutant, so it won't decrease the pollution in the air. Methane burn in presence of oxygen, carbon monoxide gas is produced. This is also not the process where decreasing of pollution takes place in the air. But this process, Nitrogen oxide react with carbon monoxide to produce carbon dioxide and nitrogen gas. So that means here more reactive uh, harmful gas to less harmful gas is made. Okay, that means this equation seems to be decrease the pollution in the air. Okay, so nitrogen oxide is more harmful. More harmful than nit nitrogen. So nitrogen gas is less harmful gas less harmful. So this is the right answer. 33, which statement about sulfuric acid is correct? Uh, it is made by Haber process. So just now you are discussing ammonia produced, ammonia uh, is manufactured by Haber process. So it is an incorrect statement as for the sulfuric acid. Right? Second, it made in the atmosphere by action of lighting. Is it correct statement? Not at all. By means of lighting, do we prepare this sulfuric acid? Not. It react with ammonia to produce fertilizers. Yes, it seems to be correct statement. But let's see D. It react with copper metal to produce hydrogen. It's not correct statement. Answer is actually C. Okay, it will react with ammonia to produce fertilizer. 34, statement about method of manufacture and uses of calcium oxides are so. Manufacture and uses. The statement, uh, it's manufactured by reacting acids with calcium carbonate. No, it's manufactured by heating calcium carbonate. Yes. Okay. So they are talking about the manufacture and the uses of calcium oxide. Calcium oxide means quick lime, CaO. Okay, so if you heat the 
calcium carbonate and limestone CaSO3, you can get it calcium oxide and, and carbon dioxide, of course, you get it. They're talking about this. So manufacture by heating calcium carbonate, this statement seems to be correct statement. Okay, third one, it is used to this sulfurized flow gases. This also seems to be correct statement. It is used to treat alkaline soil. Okay, so answer going to be which one? Can you tell me what is the correct answer for the questions? Two and two is correct, and uh, four is wrong so two three is correct so where do you find option two and three two and three is here okay so calcium oxide can be used to sulfurize for gases and then it can be formed by heating simple okay 35 the industrial uh, fractional distillation of petroleum is shown industrial fractional distillation of petroleum is shown in this diagram First is the lighter one, the refinery gas, followed by gasoline fraction, naphtha, gross, and diesel oil, fuel oil, and the final one, the heavier particles. This lubricating fraction, what we call bitumen. So petroleum, the arrow marks, you could see the Y. Okay, so which process happen at Y? So what happens? Petroleum product has to be boiled here. The evaporation takes place, no cracking, no condensation, no burning evaporation boiling to be done or you can say evaporation we boil the petroleum product here so that will get the related uh, substances in terms of kerosene naphtha okay diesel oil fuel and lots more things answer is d 36 fifth statement about homologacy is not correct uh, option A, look at it. Alkene have the same general formula C and S2. And so from the first statement itself, we can get the answers. Because this formula seems to be for alkane, A and E. Okay, alkene formula is supposed to be C and S2 N only. This is formula for alkene. But this is the formula for alkene. So which is not correct statement. Statement about homologous series is not correct. So alkene have the same general formula, formula CNS2. And so option A will be the right answer. Rest of the things, no need to read because we got it already here, the answer. Don't waste the time. Okay, 37, the diagram shows the part of molecules as polymer. So here you could see this is the polymer, right? Which diagram shows the monomer from the polymer could be manufactured, how this Polymer is produced. Okay, polymer basically made from the monomer. So, a monomer undergo the heating. Okay, so that will be undergo the polymerization reaction, then it will form polymer. So, basically, here option A it is a methane compound. That is CH4, it's an alkane compound. This is also alkane compound. This is alkene. This is alcohol. Uh, right. So always remember in the polymerization reaction, alkene compound will be, uh, you know, undergoes the polymerization reaction. Always remember, not alkene. So first option A is also alkene. Option B also alkene. So alkanes cannot undergo the polymerization reactions. Only alkene, the double bond compound. Here you can you see this double bond, carbon, carbon, double bond, you can see. These are called alkene compound or unsaturated hydrocarbons. But alkene compound, how do you recognize, identify here? They are, can you see it? Option B, the carbon carbons are actually single bond. They, they are connected with a single covalent bond. These are alkene. So alkene cannot undergo addition reactions or polymerization reactions, whereas only alkene can undergo the polymerization reaction so that this alkene can form this polymer. Okay. So option C will be the right answer, not even alcohol.
Okay, answer is C. So always remember only double bond compounds can undergo polymerization reactions or addition reactions. 38. Ethanol is manufactured by fermentation or by catalytic addition of steam to ethane, which is an advantage of ethanol manufactured by fermentation instead of by the catalytic addition of steam to ethane. So what is the correct statement? Ethanol manufactured by fermentation is purified by distillation. This is not correct. Ethanol manufactured by fermentation produces pure. This is also not. Ethanol manufactured by fermentation uses large area of land. This was not. Ethanol manufactured by fermentation uses a renewable process resources. Yes, this will be the right answer. Okay. Next, second, last. Thirty-nine. The formula of an ester is. CS3, CS2, CS2, CO2, CS2, CS2, CS3. Which acid and alcohol react together to make the ester? So here you look at it. Acid is there and alcohol. Basically, the ester can be made when acid and alcohol react. Isn't it? So the sweet smelling compound will be produced. So, which acid to be taken in order to get this ester? So, what is the name of the ester? Do you know? The name of the ester is actually here. How many carbons are there? One, two, three, three carbon. Three means prop, propyl, propanoid, or butanoid. This one, two, three, four. Four means but. So, propyl butanoid. Propyl. Butanoite, butanoite. This is the name of the ester, propyl butanoite. So, by what alcohol and which acid to be taken in order to get propyl butanoite? Obviously, you have to take butanoic acid and propanol. Okay, so alcohol is supposed to be uh, propyl and uh, acid supposed to be butanoic acid. Isn't it? So that you will get propyl butanate. So option B will be the right answers. If you like to do the structures, maybe to get to the clarity, you can do the structure. So butanic acid formula, you know. Here you take butanic acid is CS3, CS2, CS2, COOH. This is called butanic acid plus propanol. Propanol is supposed to be CS3, CS2, CH2, OH. Right? So when this react, obviously, in this is the esterification reaction, what happened? And now one water molecules will be eliminated. So from acid OH group and from alcohol on hydrogen. So that will give you a sweet smelling substance and the water molecule will be eliminated. So right as it is, see, so when this acid react with alcohol, so from butanoic acid OH group will be eliminated and uh, from alcohol H, so together they will form water. So all overally, one water molecules will be eliminated from these reactions to form a sweet smelling substance called ester. So the formula right as it is here, CS3, CS2, CS2, okay, and CO. First part then, now, now this you have to flip it. Flip the O, CS2. Then CS2 and CS3. Plus water is eliminated H2 from OH from acid, H from alcohol. So you match up this propyl butanate. Okay, you got it? Propyl butanate. Same with this formula. Okay, that's going to be the answer. So we need to have butanoic acid and propanol in order to get propyl butanoic ester. Clear? 
Okay, fine. Now, question number four, 40. Now, question number four is the last one. Okay. Polyester and polyamides are type of synthetic polymer. Which statement are correct? There are four different statements. Uh, let's see, uh, based on the polyesters and polyamide, which statements got to be correct. First statement says they are made by addition polymerization reactions. So look at it. Polyester and polyamide uh, cannot be made by addition polymerization reactions. They're supposed to be made condensation polymerization reactions. Okay. So option, I mean, the statement A is not correct. Addition polymerization is just now we discussed in the previous questions that alkene, all alkene will be, you know, under this addition reaction to form polymer, right? So here, first statement is wrong. Second statement you read, they are made by condensation polymers. Okay, this seems to be right. Okay, now read rest of two statement third is the monomer from which they are made are unsaturated hydrocarbons it's manner uh, it should not be unsaturated okay unsaturated hydrocarbon i said they will undergo addition polymerization reacts not condensation basically polyester okay polyester and polyamide is made by condensation polymerization reacts okay condensation we need to have to detect functional groups like the polyester, how alcohol group and acid group will be there in polyamide, amine group. Okay. And acid group will be there. So third statement is wrong. Now fourth statement monomer from which they are made contain the reactive functional group at their ends. So obviously uh, the polyamide and polyester is made and they will be containing the functional group. Which functional it can be OH or COO or amino group NS2. Okay, these are the functional groups you can find. These are reactive. So the statement seems to be correct. So that uh, first statement and fourth statements are actually right. So where do you find in which option? Option A is wrong. Option D also wrong. Option C also wrong. Option B is the right answers so i hope you understand thank you for watching this video